Hello there in Trent, fake Brazilian card boy here, and I got another MTG video for you guys today. Today we're going to be playing some Azorius Control, which is an archetype that I've been wanting to dwell into for a while. And as you know, I've been reflecting on uh, the current meta, I've been thinking about certain strategies that can be good against the top tier decks. Right now we have a mixture of food decks, mainly Jund, but also Golgari and the uh, Simic Flash decks running around. So I, I think Azorius Control, in a way, despite the fact that it wasn't really successful in the Mythic Championship, like I believe there were like three Azorius Control players and I think none of them made day two, but may maybe I'm wrong. Like it actually did way worse than I expected. I still think there's a lot of potential in this archetype, mainly because of the six mana sorcery planar cleansing. Planar and Cleansing enables you to destroy all non-land permanents, and I think this card is, in a way, not entirely anti-meta, but pretty anti-meta, because it enables you to destroy the Witch's Ovens, the Trail of Crumbs, the food tokens, alongside uh, the creatures, right? So it is a very efficient board wipe against food decks. The downside to this, and the reason why I don't think it's entirely anti-meta, is because it doesn't really deal with Nisa too well. Nisa, at first, before the Mythic Championship, really, she kind of, like, became uh, pretty unpopular, which was surprising to me. Like, when I was talking about the uh, potential bans, you know, before they banned Oko and Veil of Summer and Once Upon a Time, uh, in that video in which I talked about the color green, I said that Nisa was just as powerful as those cards. And if she were not to be banned, uh, Simic decks would not be, you know, gone by any means. And I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back a little bit, you know. Smart Miguel is very smart, I say so. <laughs> and uh, say that that's exactly what happened. Now, uh, Nisa is actually rising in popularity. It all started with a Simic Flash deck, which incorporated Nisa onto it. But now I've seen her in Jun Food. And uh, she's basically popping up in any deck that runs green. And she has the potential to just win the game on her own. Like, a lot of times, you don't even need synergy with her. Like, when I talk about synergy, I talk about, like, running Hydrocrasis, right? In the deck that she's in. You don't really need that for her to just be absolutely crazy. So, Planar Cleansing does not destroy lands, even when they are converted into creatures. So, when you go for a 6-mana Planar Cleansing and your opponent has dropped the Nisa... Uh, odds are you're still going to get beat down by the lands and uh, it's going to be too late for you to be able to come back from that. So having that said, we're also playing Time Wipe and uh, we have a deck with a bunch of counter spells which is aiming to counter or Aether Gust Nisa before she hits the board. I, I talk a lot about Nisa with this deck because it's one of the biggest uh, threats to this strategy. So this uh, is a... Uh, pretty straightforward deck. It's a control deck, uh, you know, remnants of the good old draw and go control builds. What we're aiming to do here is build up mana, counter our opponent's plays, and then slowly chip at them with brazen borrowers hitting them for three, and uh, also building up for a very powerful Gadwick to draw us a bunch of cards and finish them off that way. Now, something that I, I just realized regarding the sideboard because there's a card that i um i didn't add to the list myself do i not have the card i i may not like even have it is it is that hour of promise uh what's the um no it's finale 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 uh revelation yeah i don't run this card in the in the main deck um i'm actually gonna take out a what am i gonna take out for this because i i do want to play this uh I guess I'll take out a Chemist's Insight for a finale of Revelation in the sideboard. I like this card in the sideboard just because of the mirror match. I don't think this card is needed to win uh, any other matchup, really. Uh, I think this is a win more card, and it's not a card that I want to be drawing uh, in, you know, aggro matchups. Not even in food matchups the majority of the time. But I did, uh, I was playing it with this deck yesterday, and I ran into a mirror match. And I lost both games because my opponent was able to cast this, right? So, I would uh, add one of these to the sideboard, actually. But the general idea is that, is uh, with Brazen Borrowers and Gadwick, we have the ability to close out the game. And we just outvalue the hell out of our opponents. I'm still iffy about this strategy because I feel like we lack a viable finisher. I think Borrower and Gadwick, you know, can do the job, but it takes quite a while for them to do so. 
Uh, this is pretty like old school control in the sense that uh, most of the time, especially in ranked Magic Arena, you're not going to be killing off your opponent. You're not going to be bringing down their life total to zero. You're actually going to just make them quit. So that's what we're going to be trying to do here as we have a sideboard that it's uh, a bit extra tweaked English uh, to handle Simic Flash decks with double Tithe Taker alongside the uh, the triple Mystic of the Speed, which we are main decking one. I know crazy stuff. And uh, hopefully, you know, all that is good. As uh, one of the biggest threats for this deck is also aggro, which I feel I have, uh, you know, covered enough uh, with the glass casket and the giant. Um, is the giant killer? Is that the name of the card? The one drop that can destroy big boy dudes? So anyways, we're gonna hop onto rank and hopefully I get to showcase this deck. I I've, I've had mixed results with it, to be honest. Um, Azorius Control has felt like much stronger on paper than in actual practice. I am gonna keep this hand though, because we have a turn three to Fairy. And uh, Aether Gust is like useful in the vast majority of matchups, even though it seems kind of wild that we're main decking two Aether Gust. We uh, live in that sort of metagame. And see, <laughs> like I, I can't, I don't even want to like say how many times I uh, I lead off a game and my opponent drops a forest. Like that's like it feels like it's like 80% of the games I run into, which is pretty wild. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop an island here because I do want to enable the Aether Gust. Even though it would be ideal to drop the Hallowed Fountain this turn, you know I have enough lands to make it so that I don't have to worry about that. Now I would um. I am actually going to... Do I, do I want to either Gust this? Yeah, because he's going to drop that next turn. So I may, I may as well... I mean, what does this accomplish? This either Gust doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't accomplish anything. Um, because he... It, it just prevents two damage. That's all it does. Now I'll do it. Because if he wants to uh, hit me next turn, I can absorb. Yeah. Because I, I feel like if I didn't do that, he would just put it on the top of his deck. And then, yeah, I prevent two damage. But I, I would still have a 4-3 to deal with. And I would no longer have an either Gus. So I, I think that was uh, that was the right approach. I'm going to drop the Castle of Antris to enable the absorb. Not going to drop the Fairy on an anti boar state in this case. Because I'm facing an aggressive deck. So I want to make sure I can counter something like this. Wow, gain. Like, the three life gain from Absorb is absolutely massive. I am not going to play Teferi yet either. I'm going to drop this Hallowed Fountain tap. Uh, keeping the Brazen Borrower enabled. Because next turn, I can potentially drop Teferi alongside a Brazen Borrower. And, uh, Jesus. Alright. Well, we're going to get hit. These, uh, these questing beasts are an issue, not going to lie. I mean, I do have a, sh a shitload of board wipes, but, um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this, this Castle Vantress here. I'm going to play Teferi. I'm gonna bounce that. Trust me, you'll thank me later. This might be a bad idea. Just to draw a card, and, uh, I'm gonna bounce that again. I'm gonna play a game of, like, bounce and bounce until I can play Gadwick and start tapping his stuff. We're playing purely for tempo here, but the fairy does enable us to uh, prevent some stuff like Embercleave, for example, which is really important. That's We're going to go ahead and drop like the uh, out of these two planes. This one is more swag, so I'm going to drop this. We have a total of six mana. Six mana. Um, I can bounce this one more time, or I can proceed to play Gadwick here. What's my best play? Because I, I don't know if I like this this Gadwick at because if I play Gadwick now I would just draw one card from it I can wait one turn uh, bounce this but then next turn uh, I would be put in the same position right what well, I can still draw one card from it but just playing a brazen borrower should do it yeah so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this approach I'm gonna bounce this again and uh, and from that point onwards I can use Gadwick to tap this
I'm probably pissing the sh He's No! No! God damn it. <laughs> I kinda feel like I kinda deserve that. I'll see he's probably so pissed off. I just I got I got carried away. God damn it! Alright, uh three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. Um no reason to play Gadwick just yet. I can counter that. And uh play Brazen Borrower. I'm not happy that it tapped two sources of void mana for me there. Okay. You know what? That sucks. What you gonna do? And the problem is I can't target this either. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this land. I'm pretty healthy and I got these Brazen Borrowers to hit him down. I also want to keep this Dovin's Veto to protect my Gadwick from removal. So I'm going to tap uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I'm going to draw 3 cards with this. And call that a turn. Now, yeah, this can start pinging at me, but I, I don't really care as long as I protect him from like a Domri's ambush. We're good. Unless he has like two of them. Okay, he's got two of them. Well, shit. This time wipe is pretty sweet though. I don't like the fact that it taps my... I return that to my hand, I get rid of that. And uh, I could drop the fairy, but I don't see the point in doing that. I can just drop a brazen borrower. That's fine. He's gonna die before I do. At this rate. I just have to uh, be careful with an Ember Cleave and uh, stop clicking, getting so trigger happy on that my turn thing. Like, I, I was about to miss that again. All right, so um, I, just, I, I have to worry about an Ember Cleave. An Ember Cleave deals uh, uh, quite a bit of damage to me, but I do have the Brazen Borrowers, anyways. So, what I feel I can do is I can play Teferi. Stand by and watch. I've got time. To just take away instant plays out of the equation, like, you know, surprise Ember Cleaves and all that stuff. He just keeps going face, which is to be expected. There's that. And now because I, I taken that out of the equation, okay, it's not it's not tapping poorly, right? Alright, nice. Because he can't, he can't play instant speed anymore, I guarantee lethal with triple of these. That, that was the idea, basically. He can't stop this. Like, even if he has shock or whatever, he can't, like, he can't do anything because of Teferi. So, like, that guaranteed my lethal. And uh, that worked out pretty well. I, I actually killed my opponent. That's, that's fantastic. Like, I, I don't get to kill my opponents too often, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm gonna drop in three glass caskets. Giant killers, that was indeed its name. A fourth time wipe, double Aether Gust, because his, his deck is red and green. <laughs> you know. Uh, obviously, the uh, the Mystical Dispute goes away. I don't think I need another Planar Cleansing, to be honest. I think uh, this is enough. Um, I don't like Mass Manipulation. It seems a little bit too slow. I'm also not a huge fan of Chemist's Insight, even though I am technically draw and go, right? I have to take out a lot of cards here, though. Uh, what do I what do I opt for? Um, oh, Dovin's veto, Danny the veto, Danny the veto. Uh, you know, was decent there. I guess stopping a Domri's ambush, but I don't know how many of those he's gonna keep. Anyways, uh, we got four more cards to go here. What else? What am I missing? I want to keep Gadwick, and I want to keep the Brazen Borrowers because they are you know win conditions. Um, maybe I can take out one Planar Cleansing, and maybe I can take out the Chemist's Insight. To be honest. And I don't even know how good Teferi is, to be completely honest with you. Like, I can go down to three Teferis. 
you know, as much as I like the chemisters, like, chemisters is good, because I, I can also run out of steam. I feel like it's more important to make sure that I have uh, cards that enable me to survive, and uh, this hand is good enough. The problem is, I'm on the play. So, this means that stuff like this, uh, like, I'm going to be able to counter him from turn 4 onwards, and that that is definitely slow. Against an aggro deck? Yikes. Alright, I'm going to drop this island. We do have the Brazen Borrower enabled, which means that we can, uh... We can bounce whatever comes in here, except for that. Except for that. I cry every time. Um... Yeah, that's a problem. What do I do here? I mean, I'm going to take 5 damage to the face, so I, I don't think I can afford that. But if I play this, I'm always taking 1 damage to that, but I, at least... Slowing down this Pell Collector may be the way to go. Yeah, this Cinder Vines is actually pretty annoying. Not gonna lie. The pressure uh, that I'm feeling right now is pretty real. Let's drop this. I'm not, I'm not gonna counter that just yet. Because I mean Gadwick here is uh the problem is I can't Gadwick and and opt. I think I I think I just have to live oh man, but what if what if he um Oh boy. I, I, I need for this Gadwick to stick um, so I can start tapping. The problem is I can't... Yeah. <laughs> the problem is I can't really tap... Uh, he's, he's actually... Okay. I'm gonna drop that island. I'm gonna use this opt on his turn to tap before he gets to attack. I can't, um, I can't target the uh, the Gruel Spellbreaker, but I, I can target the Questing Beast at the very least. Even though the problem is I'm taking damage. Like th this Cinder Vines is going a long way to just really. Like I think I have to bounce it eventually. Okay, let, let's get that away. See if we draw something else. Okay, that that Aether Gust is actually really solid. If he attacks, I will trade Gadwick for this. I have to. I cannot counter that. Um, I... Okay, so... If I if I return this to the top of his deck, he's gonna draw an extra turn anyways, and I have to balance this, and he, play, he can play that, and uh, I mean, he doesn't seem to have the mana. But it doesn't matter because I still can't... I'm still gonna get withered down by this. One of my best chances is, is to actually either gust this and top deck uh, either a planar cleansing or a board wipe. Yeah, considering he has cinder vines, I need to be bringing a full set of those. So I think my best bet, my best bet is to actually either gust this and, and top deck a board wipe. Either gust that and top deck a board wipe. Alright, on to the next game. Yeah, considering he's bringing uh, a full set of Shifting Ceratops, uh, I think we definitely need a full set of Planar Cleansings. Like, it, it just has to be that way. Um, Brazen Borrowers are still important as win conditions. I don't know about Teferi, man. Like, I think two Teferis is fine. It's not like he's super important here. Uh, Giant Killer can kill the Ceratops, which is nice. Um, so I can drop this, and I can... One more card. I mean, Teferi's still good as a two of, I think. Gadwick is important. Maybe maybe I can go one less Brazen Borrower. Let's do that. Like, I, I don't want to take out too many Brazen Borrowers because I need to actually, you know, win this game, right? Like, I need, I need to kill him. 
So I, I, I need the flyers. That's one of the issues that uh, this deck has, right? Like, you can't you can't say no to uh, to win cons. We have a turn one opt here. I'm gonna keep this hand, even though it's very mana hungry. Uh, I'm going to really hope this opt uh, gets us there. <laughs> Like, I, I need... The, if, if it's not a land, I 100% like, just scry it down, yeah. Like, anything that's not a land is unacceptable here. Okay. Okay. Alright, see? See? That's good. That's good. Got me worried there for a second. I'm not going to pay any extra damage. We may see a stomp here. The most important thing for us right now, the most important thing here is uh, is to curve out. I have the chop down, which means I can like this is pretty thematic. If I'm, I'm gonna kill the Bone Crusher Giant with this, but if he plays a four drop, like that right there, I, I don't want to tap this. I, I don't want to destroy this this uh, pl uh, playable passage because. Uh, I don't want to thin my deck out of lands because I want to draw lands. Okay, so I am going to opt here. I need I need lands. There we go. Okay, so now what I can do is I can drop the giant killer and the fairy to bounce this. Even though bouncing this uh, can technically translate into more damage, it does slow him down. Even though I could just glass casket it, but. I, I wanna I wanna cycle through my deck. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna bop this. I have enough sources of white mana, so I gotta focus on searching for blue. Alright. And um I could also just glass casket this. It's probably better. Because with Time Wipe, I can return this Giant Killer to my hand. The problem is, uh, with all his haste units, I'm, I'm taking... Okay, he can't uh, Ceratops here, though. So, Questing Beast is the only, like, well, 4 mana haste. He could still drop a... Okay, I, I want him to start, like, flooding the board a little bit. Because I want to get value out of my board wipes here. Alright, I have to take this hit. Puts me down to twelve, but we do get to uh, we do get to time wipe here. Yeah, this planar cleansing is a problem now that I realize it. Yeah, this is an issue. Hmm. Land. I need land. Okay, that's that's a land. Maybe I could have killed that before that got buffed, but you know. What do I want here? I guess blue is important. Okay, Gadwick is the kind of stuff I want to see, even though I am uh, slightly concerned about more uh, hasty units. But I am going to play you. Draw three cards here. Would have loved for that to be an island so I could opt into it. Okay, that's a Dockers ambush. That's fine. A 
Okay, we, we've slowed him down, <laughs> which is the important thing here. And, uh... I'm gonna play Teferi now. Let's slow this down. No, I am not making this up as I go. And let's let's start attacking him because we we want to close out this game, right? Hey, or make him quit. <laughs> Whoo! All right, there we go. So at that point, we're in a good position because that Aether Gust actually enabled me because I was I was pretty terrified of a shifting Ceratops because uh, I can't tap it with uh, Gadwick, but Aether Gust would enable me to buy some time and having the Teferi on on the board and going for the plus one. Uh, it enables me to go for instant speed board wipes, right? The problem is, uh, like, something that I, I, I was having an issue with was the fact that my glass casket, like, would get destroyed by planner cleansing and would give him the giant back. So that that that's a bit of an awkward uh, anti-synergy. But regardless, you know, we got we got the win. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that game. I showcased uh, just how efficient this deck can be. And uh, consider, you know... Taking into account like how scary an aggro matchup can be, uh, the deck did really well. WP21. Alright, so I'm going to keep this because it is a 4 lander. That's basically why I'm doing it. Uh, this way I can... I can lead off with this. I mean, there's no reason for me to enable Mystic with this spew turn one. It's like, what am I going to try to counter an opt? Remember what I said about 80% of my games? My opponent leads off with the forest. Like, it's 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 no joke. Like, it's actually real. This place is really cool, by the way. I, I like the War of the Sparklands a lot. Not as much as the actual set itself, but I like these quite a bit. I mean, I will dispute that. You best believe I will dispute that. Play the, the Cove, since I don't see myself needing to go for a Borrower here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I... No, I, I want to make good use out of it. I'm not in a hurry to finish off this game. Maybe I am, though. Because um, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. I'm not going to lie. I'm not so sure about the, the ramp matchup. I am not so sure about that one. Okay, I, I love Gadwick here, but unfortunately, uh, I just cannot afford a Nisa. Like, I have to always make sure I can answer Nisa. Yeah, uh, no. Not. Nine, 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 nine. Unfortunately, I can't answer a second Nisa as of right now. I mean, I, I, I need to keep this just because if second, if the other Nisa happens, um. Fuck, they, they always have it, dude. It's it's actually crazy how they always have it. I will aid you. They just always have the back-to-back -back nieces. Yeah, th this is a threat. The fact that this resolved... I mean, that's why I'm keeping this this borrower. The problem is we are on, we're on the clock here. We gotta take this hit. We got to uh, uh, bop this, search for an island. And at the end of his turn, we got to go for the Castle of Antris. And uh, search for a counter spell because we need to bounce this. Okay, there we go. We must bounce this.
And uh, then we need to absorb. I was worried there for a second. I thought they had like a negate or something. I'm just gonna draw as much as I can. Uh, I'm still not in the red, and uh, he's like 16 cards in, so it's hard to believe that he has a third Nisa, but you know, whenever I face these decks, I don't know how, they just always, <laughs> they always have her, man. Like, I, dude, this is like one fourth of the deck, and he has like three Nisas. What the fuck, man? Like, oh my God. You gotta chill, dude, holy shit. All right, we, we got to take this hit because we need Gadwick on the board. Uh, we got to make as much use of our life total. I just still can't believe that's a, like 16 cards and a third Nisa because this happened to me yesterday like multiple times as well as I was playing this deck. All right, we drew into the counter spell. Praise be. The Lord and the fruit and all that stuff. Um, we're going to want to do this at the beginning of his upkeep. Um, I, can I afford, how much mana do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which means we can do this, this, and this, but we can't opt. But with Teferi, we can bounce one of his lands. We need to preserve, like, one here, one here, one here, then two there. That's three and two. Okay, so I do want to go Teferi. This isn't a fight you can win. Trust me, I have a plan. And now we do this. So, uh, with this line of play, I can guarantee that um, unless they attack, like, the, the last thing I want to see, because I, I can't, unfortunately, I can't, um, I can't tap lands, right? So, uh, I can't uh, stop him from attacking first with the forest to enable a instant speed play. So, I mean, this Teferi just basically got rid of a 3-3, which is, you know. The main reason why I play, the secondary reason is that if my opponent gets uh, impatient and he tries to drop Nisa first, I can guarantee that he won't be able to counter my counter. And uh, regardless of what happens here. The question is, do I block this? I lose Gadwick. I lose Gadwick, which is a big deal. Um, but how else am I going to deal with this eventually? And the problem is, if he has, he has the mana to, like, mystical, if he's main decking mystical dispute, I have, I have to trade with this. I have to get rid of this. It sucks, but I gotta do it. I think that's my play. Because now if he wants to play Nisa, like, he just, he can't, even if he has a negate or whatever, he can't, like, I have to opt here. Search for a board wipe. That's nice and all, but I, I need I need an actual board wipe. Six, seven, eight, okay, nine. This enables us to Here goes nothing. Doesn't matter what I play, it it has to be a planes, actually. It has to be a planes because I need four sources of white mana.
Unfortunately, um... We're, we're in big trouble, just because that, that Nisa... Like, we've, we've received too much damage. We're too low. Okay. That's pretty crucial. Because, I mean, you know... He's, like, one-third of his deck in, and he's already played... We've, we've defeated three Nisas. Just keep that in mind, guys. Three Nisas, which is, like, the biggest threat for us. I'm gonna go ahead and, and tap two sources of white mana. I know my responsibility. And I'm gonna Don't worry, I got this. I'm gonna return that just because. At this point we have a total of um four, five, six, which means we have the ability to play two brazen borrowers. <gasps> so we're better off just dropping this tapped. Even though it's always good to bluff, right? But what if this match drags out and I really need to be able to... Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, um, that's rip. All right, we got picked. Damn, and it, it's like exact lethal too. That sucks. I mean, that's, that's one of the things by, of letting like... I mean, I, I would have lost Gadwick for the planner cleansing anyways. But that's that's one of the perks, right? Ouch. Uh, not much I could have done there differently, I think. Like I said, Nisa is, is problematic, and the fact that we had to deal with three, like, it left us wide open. It forced our, our counter spells, and uh, we didn't. Like, that Dovin's Beetle would have been nice. But at the same time... This wouldn't have been enough. I think we can definitely expect uh, shifting Ceratops to come in, amongst other things, which makes me want to keep. I want to keep two Planner Cleansings. I don't think I need as many board wipes, and Planner Cleansing kind of hurts me uh, as well. We want the Mystical Disputes here because he's going to be bringing Mystical Disputes, and uh, I would I would argue. I mean, I could go Giant Killer, but I think I'm better off with just pure pure board wipes. So I need to take out five cards. It's not easy. Mass manipulation is um, is perhaps a, a bit too expensive here. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure, man. There's a lot of stuff that I want here. A lot of stuff that I need. Like t skimming out four cards here is uh, an issue because Brazen Borrower is the way I like. I, I need to be able to kind of like aggro him in, in a certain in a way. Um, but Chemistry is also useful. Especially because I need to draw so much. I'm going to drop one Dovin's Veto since I... Okay, l let me do this quick without talking because uh, I'm running out of time. I'm not sure if this is right. I just skimmed a little bit from each part because I want all these cards. But maybe for... Like, Brazen Borrower is, is objectively bad in this matchup but the problem is how do i win if i don't ping him with the like that's one of the issues with this archetype right like how how do i win without that we keep this as we have uh, absorbs to go off with um we have gadwick as well so that that kind of like encourages me to keep the opt but at the same time um i i need to draw into mystical disputes because i can definitely i should expect for my opponent to be backing a full set of mystical disputes himself so i need to be able to dispute the dispute as i try to counter or play to fairy so i, I need to dig through my deck and uh, i need to either find lands to, I, I just need to draw into more cards basically even though i'm a control deck i am on the clock because i'm facing a ramp deck this is probably this is this definitely has to be, like, our worst matchup. Because against Flash, we have a very nice game plan. Like, even though he mulliganed down to five, I, I still don't... I'm not gonna lie. I don't feel super confident here. <laughs> I just don't. Alright, let, let's scout for that Mystical Dispute. Yeah, that's a Mystical Dispute. He has one. Um, I'm gonna take that land. Just because uh, this deck can afford to get a little bit flooded. Yeah, this man has a mystical dispute. So, until we find our own mystical dispute, we uh, can't be playing, like, or, or we reach five mana.
I know that seems like a bad use of, of uh, Absorb, but I need to slow him down. I need to deny the ramp. I deny card draw and ramp with that. And um, if he had a mystical dispute, I mean, we just drew into the answer anyways. I'm known for my excellent timing. Here we go. I mean, we have Mystical Dispute now, which means he can't uh, recast that. Beautiful. We don't have to worry about Anissa next turn. So this is probably the turn in which we can Gadwick. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Alright. Obviously, him missing his fourth land drop uh, mattered, but, you know, it's Magic the Gathering. It's gonna happen. Uh, now that we're on the play, though, our Absorb is not looking as hot. So, I, I can actually drop a couple of them. My question is, do I go Tide Taker? I just don't think... Like, against Simic Flash, Tide Taker is awesome, but against Simic Ramp, uh, things change. You can make an argument for uh, Glass Casket since it is, it is able to target lands from Nisa. I think Dovin's Veto makes more sense than Absorb here, but I, I do think I need to drop to, to, to Absorbs. <laughs> I, I was looking for my mute, but I, I didn't see it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Professional. Professional YouTuber. Um, ah, let's see. How do I approach this? I think we may need another Planner Cleansing. I think board wipes are extra important now that we're on the now that we're on the play on the draw. Um, I still like the Teferi's. Praise and Bar Orc can still be pretty important, but honestly, I, I think this may be the right approach. Like I said, Absorb is uh, drop going down to like uh, I, st I don't know because I'm gonna go with this because Absorb is still really good, man. Absorb is still really important. Even if it's less useful. Do I keep this? It's a two lander. I'm gonna keep it. Just because it's double Gadwick and we're on the draw, which means we have an extra chance to draw a card. And if we manage to play Teferi on curve, uh, this hand is definitely worth it. He may go for a main face growth spiral or that. I do want to bounce this with Brazen Borrower. My question is very simple, and the game may really revolve around this. Does he have a mystical dispute on top of that? Let's find out. He does. Or, or not. Sorry, I'm late. I'll protect you. Okay, that means no turn, no Nisa, no turn for Nisa, which is very important. Very, very important. I've done the hero thing before. I I need to keep the the, the, the Dovin's veto enabled. No more games. He's ramping. He's ramping. I'll protect you. I'm gonna let him attack me. 
I'm not gonna use this time wipe until the end because I, I need to make sure I need to make sure that I always answer the Nisa. Like that has to be my priority. I won't let but you I win. want I want to wipe this board, don't get me wrong. If he has two Nisas, though, <laughs> GG no re. I mean, you know, ma maybe I'm a little bit lucky and he didn't find like three Nisas in his top cards again. All right, well that kind of sucks. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of cards. Thankfully for me, I'm able to, you know, have that instant speed uh, time wipe there. This might be a bad idea. I know, bruh. I know. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna play Gadwick because I need to at this point. Two, three, and I'm gonna just tap him for one. So the downsides are our opponent has a significant mana advantage over us and a card advantage advantage over us. Uh, our advantage is we have uh, board presence and a Teferi. It's not the greatest. We have a counter spell for Nisa. Like we're, uh, this is for Nisa. If if Nisa's coming down, I'm just I'm countering her every single time. I've got time. That happened. Yikes. If I had as much mana, I mean, how, how much mana does he have right now? Four, seven, seven, nine. He has two, two lands over me. Well, technically ten because this provides him with an extra one. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, is he going in? Tell me you're going in. Or is, is that a Crassus? Because anything but a Crassus. Just have that be a finale. Oh my god. All right, change your plans, boys. We're we're going smork. We have we have a lot. We have way too much health to take down, and we're gonna be forced to like okay, but but we we can do this. I don't know how, but we can do this. I'm gonna search for blue. To send my, my deck out of lands, because that's the last thing I need right now. And I'm gonna I'm gonna smork, man. I'm just gonna smork as if my life depended on it. Uh the problem is, you know. Gotta buy time, man. We gotta buy time, and we gotta hope that um, this Danny DeVito here, this Dovin's Vito, can can do it for us. But I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> he has eight, ten, potentially eleven mana, and like, how many cars in his hand, dude? Jesus Christ! I just have to hope that there's like a bazillion lands. Like this is not, it's not technically over, right? Like we have the answer 
to, uh, to Nisa. You know what the biggest issue is here? Uh... I, I need to keep sitting. Offer him the trade. Call that a turn. That's a girl spiral, that's fine. That's fine as well. I just have to hope that he, he just doesn't have, you know, like right now he has six cards and he's gonna draw into a seventh. That's gonna be what he wants. But I have to hope that that is just not, like, enough, you know, because he has all the fuel in the world. Like, he can't, like, he's not being held down here by anything. What time is it, by the way? Because I have to pick up my brother. Okay. Uh, Quasi-duplicate. Um, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's, like, even worse than Nisa. That's like, that's super bad. We can't, we can't allow that to happen. Surprising that he didn't, um... Behold, nature's true power! I could have attempted to opt for something, but I'm actually fine uh, trading this and then just uh, trying to find an answer. Because I need another Brazen Borrower, basically. There's only one in my deck left, though. This prevents the possibility of Mystical Dispute and... Okay, so three mana. We have four, seven there. This is this is such a difficult hill to climb, man. Okay, so I need um I need brazen into. There's a lot of cards that I need. Do I just focus on drawing as much as I can and trying to survive for a turn and just keeping the opt enabled? One, two, three. Three cards, four cards, five cards, six cards. Fuck it. The problem is, if he has a Crassus here, it's gonna be like the biggest Crassus you've ever seen. Or that. I, I forgot about Finale there. Alright. To be fair, uh, he had backup for a negate, so even if I picked up this Aether Gust, at, at least we're gonna go out in style. We're gonna get Finale here. <laughs> oh my god. All of, all of these have, like, Trample, right? I mean, I could have, I could have tapped a little bit less. 
but to be fair, he, he left two mana here, which means he must have a negate in there. Or something. Like, it's not a coincidence that he left two mana open. Because he was playing, if he was playing around Mystical Dispute, he would have left three, not two. So that's very telling that he, he had an answer, anyways. Oh no, he it, it's like no, yeah, but this is not forest, so. Harness the elements. Actually, th he did leave three, right? Yeah, that must mean he had like a Mystical Dispute. Or something. <laughs> All right. Let's take it. We almost lived that. We almost survived. Alright, GG. Very tough matchup. Super tough matchup, man. Like, uh, we were lucky. Like, honestly, like, we were fortunate to win the second game. That's one of the problems that I've, I've realized with this deck. Like, I like Azorius Control uh, as an archetype. Uh, but it's definitely, like, it just, it's missing that late game power, and when you pair this card, when you pair this deck with like uh, Simic or any sort of like ramp deck, you just get overwhelmed. Nisa in general is just a very powerful card, and I think uh, as time passes, especially this this last like month till like the new set, people are going to realize more and more that she's the defining force of the meta game. Like not nah, food, not nah, not anything else. It's it's Nisa. Nisa, in my opinion, is the strongest card in the game. And, uh, you know, Simic has has not gone anywhere. As you guys saw there, Simic, like, not only, people talk a lot about Simic Flash, but uh, Andre Mangushi did amazing in Mythic Championship with uh, the Simic Ramp deck. And it's just, it's really strong. <laughs> like, it's late game is, is really hard to beat, uh, especially for a deck like this, right? Um, I'm more of a fan of the Esper deck that I showcased yesterday, and I will showcase that deck more, but I want to give more variety. And there's, a, like, I do like Planar Cleansing in this meta. But if Nisa didn't exist, it'd be perfect. I mean, you could mix Planar Cleansing technically with Nisa's. So it doesn't kill your lands. I, I think that's something, you know, worth exploring, I guess. But overall, it's still a fun deck. It's still pretty good. Uh, it just has that issue with, with uh, Simic decks. But still a, a very fun deck to build. I, I, just, I just wish it had like a stronger a faster or more clean way to end games, right? Like what I like about the Esper deck is that uh, once I reach turn six, I have a very, very, very powerful play with Bullet Citadel. If I get Bullet Citadel and Kenrith on the board, it, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. Like if it's Nisa or whatever, like I'm going, I'm going to go crazy on them. And I feel like that's something that uh, Azorius, pure Azorius control, is is missing. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the uh, the live. Anyways, uh, I think I got some good quality games here. You know, wins and losses, but good quality matches overall. Even though the live was pretty long, definitely better quality games than uh, yesterday's video. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. So yeah, freaking love you. Thank you for watching. Have a soul day. I'll see you tomorrow.